Thank you so much to Kelly and all of the Break the Silence Festival crew. Um, like she said, my name is Kelly Hansen. I am the founder of BCC Evolution. It's a mental health and suicide awareness nonprofit. But to start off, I want to take you on a journey. A journey through tragedy and trauma. A journey that turned into love, light, lots of hope, and a cause that's bigger than myself. I lost my middle sister, Carrie Lynn, to a completed suicide on February 20th, 2017. There doesn't go a day by that I don't miss her and I wish that I could have changed the outcome. But what happened was, is I knew I couldn't sit around and do nothing. I knew that I wanted to make an impact on this thing that we call life, even if it's only one person at a time. So I want to ask you three key questions. Do you suffer or struggle from a mental health challenge? Or do you know somebody that struggles or suffers from a mental health challenge? Or do you know somebody that died by suicide? Whatever your answer is, it's okay. You're not alone and you're at the perfect place at the perfect moment right now. But I wanna tell you a little bit about my sister. She was that one person that I went to for everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Advice, she always had the perfect answer and I don't know how. Cooking, I use that one all the time. And if you ask my partner, he'd probably say he sh wishes she was still alive because I tend to burn everything. She was my birth coach for both of my babies. She helped me file for divorce from a narcissistic drug addict. Unfortunately, my divorce finalized after she passed, but thank you, sister, I got my divorce. She knew me better than I knew myself most of the time. Like when I was 15, I got pregnant. I didn't tell anybody for four months. We were driving down the street one day and I was asking her innocent questions about my nephew. She stops the car in the parking lot and looks at me and says, you're pregnant, aren't you? I just started bawling. That's the type of person she was. She knew me better than myself most of the time. She was a CPR instructor, a caregiver for paraplegic. She took care of my nephew who has type one diabetes since he was two years old and my niece who struggled with a mental health challenge herself. She was surrounded by millions, but yet she attempted suicide six times. And for me, I shut my emotions off to her. I couldn't understand why she didn't want to be on this planet. So I shut it down and I used to call my sister, my crazy sister, or she was over dramatic, always looking to have attention but it was just because I didn't understand. So I've made it my life's mission to educate people on how you can help people because I didn't understand. And I want you to know if you've had anybody that's died by suicide or struggles with a mental health challenge, we all go through the hoodoo coulda voodoo we do's as I call them and it's okay. Again, you're not alone. So I wanna transition a little bit and tell you about my nonprofit and also give you seven strategies that I've come up with for mental wellness. So my nonprofit is all based off of education like I told you. So I wanna give you some tips and tricks that maybe will help you for your mental health wellness. So number one is find something that lights you up. For me, it's Baby Yoda. I know that's not his real name, but I love Baby Yoda. Yesterday I was in the grocery store and I saw some hand, hand wash and I was so excited because he lights me up. And number two is find a way to release your happy juices. So when I talk about happy juices, it's the serotonin, the dopamine, your endorphins that actually make you happy. Find a way to release those. Volunteering is a great way. And personally, I love doing random acts of kindness for strangers. It helps those happy juices flow. 
Number three is practice gratitude. This can be really hard and challenging, especially when you're suffering from a mental health challenge or you're in a deep, dark place. But find a way to be grateful every day. It could be the toothbrush that you use. It could be the roof over your head. It could be coming to events like this. Practice gratitude daily so that your brain starts thinking positively versus negatively. And number four, words matter. If you're running around telling everybody that you're sad, you're mad, you're depressed, your brain just works in black and white. And it's kind of like your yes man or woman. So if you say, I'm mad, I'm depressed, it'll say, okay, I call this the Eeyore syndrome. So again, find a way to change your words into a positive. Like I do, I say I'm abundant, I'm happy, I'm healthy. And my brain will say, okay, and make that happen. So be cautious with the words that you use. And you might have noticed that I said completed suicide when I talked about my sister. In the mental health world, we are trying to change the verbiage that you use. No longer use committed because they didn't actually commit a crime. So use completed or died by suicide. And number five, this is probably the hardest for me, but practice what you preach. I can tell you till I'm blue in my face what you should do. But I have to remind myself that I have to practice what I preach. And so that's why I came up with these seven strategies is so that I would remind myself. And number six, create a personal safety plan or a self-care plan. And when I talk about this, I talk about a triangle. Because if you didn't know, a triangle is the strongest structure in the world. So find three people in your life that have your back no matter what day or night, talk to them and make sure that they know that you're on, they are on your safety plan, but find those three people that will have your back no matter what and write them down. Find three places, sounds, whatever might light you up, like I, I talked about earlier. There's a lot more that goes into creating a full safety plan. So if you want more information, just come chat over at my booth. And number seven is find a mentor or a coach. This has been huge for me personally because I can't go at this alone and you shouldn't feel like you have to either. If you're really truly struggling with a mental health challenge or a disorder or an illness and you're having suicidal thoughts, don't try to go at it alone. Find a mentor or a coach that can help you get out of that place. So I'm gonna recap for you really quick. My seven strategies are number one, find something that lights you up. Number two, find a way to release your happy juices. Number three, practice gratitude. Number four, words matter. Number five, practice what you preach. Number six, create a personal safety plan or self-care plan. And number seven, find a mentor or a coach. If any of this was useful for you today, I really hope that you take away at least some of those strategies. And if you want more details or want to find out more about BCC Evolution, you can find us at bccevolution.org. We're on all the social media, so it's all just BCC Evolution. Or come talk to me at my booth today and let's have a conversation about how I can support you. Because again, you don't have to go at this alone. We're all here to support you. And I wanna thank you for being here today because you never know whose life you can impact in a moment. And if we take it from our minds to our hearts and open our mouths, together we can make mental health matter. Thank you.